Hi, my name is Vic Veer. I want to explain to you why ENT surgeons like me often ask people to use salt water to clean out their nose so you can naturally improve your breathing through your nose and also help with sinus problems. Now, there are two main reasons to use salt water in your nose. The first is to clean out all the allergens and the pollutants, the pus and the mucus in your nose, because that really helps, A, to stop it from being irritated by all this stuff up your nose, but also to get rid of all the mucus. So when you do use another spray, say a steroid spray or some other type of spray, that actually hits onto the lining of your nose rather than on the mucus, because you're not trying to treat the mucus, you're trying to treat the underlying skin that's making the mucus in the first place. So by cleaning all this stuff out before you use, say, a steroid spray, it should work more effectively. The second reason to use salt water is that what you're trying to do is also shrink down the turbulence. Turbulence are things in your nose that swell up and come down again. So if you have a cold, it swells up and blocks your breathing. If you have hay fever or house dust mite allergy, these turbulents swell up and tend to block your nose. And you can shrink these things with steroids and other things like that. But some people don't want to use steroids all the time and would rather use something more natural like salt water. And if you use a hypertonic solution of salt water, it works really well. The main reason it works well is because the salt water draws out the water from inside your turbinates and shrivels them up so you can breathe better. Once they've shriveled down and gone out the way, you can breathe past it. There's more air to breathe through. Now, the, the way you can imagine osmosis, if you got, uh, you can try this at home, you can get a, a big glass of very salty water, put a grape in there, uh, enough so that it floats at the top, a bit like in the Dead Sea, you see people floating around in the Dead Sea. If you leave it there for long enough, the water within the grape gets pulled out of the grape and it shrivels up and drops down to the bottom. So that's what you're trying to do to the turbulence. You're trying to shrivel them up so you can breathe past them so they don't get so large and block off your nose. And as I said before, it's completely natural. It's just salt water. So what I think you should go for is a hypertonic solution. As I said before, you need it to be more salty than isotonic. Isotonic is the same sort of concentration as within your turbulence. You don't want that. You want the fluid to come out of the turbulence so that the turbulence shrink down. So go for a hypertonic solution. So a really good example of hypertonic or really concentrated salt water is this Sterimal congestion spray. And what you do is you spray this up your nose and you can sniff it up as much as you like because it is just salt water. And it's sort of, as you can see, it's just a spray like this. I don't know if you can see any of that. It's a fine mist that comes out and goes all over the place and you can chase your kids around the house with it. Sterimar is basically French seawater. I don't think it's particularly exciting. I'm sure it's purified and sterile and all those other things. But it's very expensive French seawater. And it is really good because all you're doing is spraying this up your nose and getting rid of the allergens, as I said, the pollutants and things like that. And it's also constricting or decreasing the size of your turbulence so you can breathe better afterwards. Now, this is really good if you've got hay fever or a cold or something like that. You're just trying to clean out your nose so you can breathe a little bit better. It's natural. You don't have to use steroids with it. It does help if you use steroids on top of it. But if you're trying to get away from steroids, this would be a great thing to start off with. Now, what this doesn't do very well is deal with sinus problems. And a lot of people get nasal problems and sinus problems mixed up. And I'll try and explain that now. Nasal problems are basically the passages from the front of your nose right down to the back of your nose. There's no sort of going into little other compartments. Those little other compartments are the sinuses. These are big holes within the bones of your face in between here, which are called the maxillary sinuses, between here, between your eyes, which are the ethmoid sinuses, and then these big frontal sinuses here in the forehead as well. There are other little sinuses, the sphenoid sinuses, which is right in the middle of your skull. Now, all of these sinuses are big air spaces within the bones of your face, the facial skeleton. And some people say that it's useful for resonance. The way we speak, it gives it a bit more tone, you know, like those big sort of air sacs in dinosaur brains. And you go, oh, look, that must be so they can make a big noise or something like that. That's probably part of it as well. But also there's a part of it. You don't want this to be full, heavy bone because you'd be trying to keep your head up and you work harder on your neck muscles. So there's no need to have such strong bones in that area. It just opens up the space a little bit and means that it's not so heavy for you. So we do have these sinuses inside our, inside our faces. They also make nitric oxide and things like that, which I'll leave for another video. The problem is that sometimes these sinuses may get blocked. And when that happens is that no air or fluid or mucus can come out of the sinuses. That means that they slowly, I'll put a little diagram down here, they slowly fill up with mucus because it's got nowhere to go. It doesn't travel out to the normal way. It normally comes out at this point here in your nose. 
And because it can't get out, it just fills up and fills up and fills up. It feels heavier on one side. When you lean forward, you can feel it more because there are some nerves inside your sinuses that tells you what's going on in there. When it's completely full and it's got nowhere else to go, it starts putting pressure on the inside of your nose and inside of your face. So one, say this one here, the maxillary sinus, it feels like, oh, I've got a lot of pain here or between your eyes or up in your forehead here. And it hurts. And you're trying to, oh, God, I wish the pain. You take painkillers and sometimes you take antibiotics. What you're trying to do really is try and get rid of that fluid so that the pressure goes. And that's really useful to get rid of the pain of sinusitis. You'll still have the infection when you drain all this fluid out and you'll still feel rotten, but it won't be so painful once the pressure comes out. If you have a lot of pressure, say here, for example, you can actually feel it in your upper teeth because it feels like, oh, I feel like I've got dental pain or something like that because the roots of these teeth go into the sinus. If you've got it between your eyes, it can sometimes even go into your eye. You get a blown red eye. If you see a big red eye, if you've got sinusitis problems, you should go straight to your emergency department or go to your hospital doctor if it's not that bad. Try and see someone as soon as possible. There are other things that come up here, something called a POTS puffy tumour. But all of these things are complications of sinusitis. Most people just get a horrible, painful part in one side of their face, sometimes both sides. And what we're trying to do is try and get rid of that pain by clearing out that sinus. Now, using this spray up your nose is not really going to do that. It might open up your nose so you can breathe better but it doesn't actually get into your sinuses. If you've got sinus problems, therefore, you shouldn't just use the spray. Try and use a bottle of salt water rather than a, a spray. So inside the box, you'll get a squeezy bottle like this. So you can see how it just squeezes in like that. And that's quite useful because there's a little hole at the end there and you put it up your nose and you squeeze the water. The water comes from the bottom, goes up into your sinuses. That works really well. You need to make fill it up with water first and make sure it's warm water. So I would fill up your sink or something like that and keep changing the temperature so that when you put your hand inside, it feels the same temperature as your hand. Not too cold, not too hot. Otherwise, it just hurts. And put one of these sachets inside there. So you pour it in once you get to this sort of dotted line here. Put this sachet in here to make it salty. In fact, I said before you should make it hypertonic. So I'd put two or maybe even sometimes three if you can take that sort of level of burning inside your nose. Most people just put two. They're trying to shrink down the sinuses. So put two of these sashes in there, mix it all around, put this on, stick, squeeze it in, and put it up your nose and gently squeeze like this. All that fluid will go up and go around your sinuses. And then all this stuff will start coming out either the other nostril or out your mouth. So you sort of feel like you're, you're sort of waterboarding yourself. It's a horrible sensation. But when all this stuff comes out, all the pus comes out because you've bashed through that little plug of mucus that's blocked your sinuses and all this green and yellow and bloody stuff sometimes comes out. You feel so much better because all the pressure is relieved from inside that sinus. So it all comes out. It doesn't so longer put pressure on the side walls of your sinus and you feel better because of it. I definitely do it over a sink because it's not a very nice feeling. I'm not going to show you how, how to do it because it's quite easy. The instructions are really good. And I wouldn't bother with the neti pot and things like that because that's it doesn't seem, seem to make any sense to me. If you're trying to get into the sinus, you need to put a little bit of pressure. So it's it's meant to be high volume, low pressure. This one here is high pressure, low volume. So you can see there's a slight difference between the two. But this is just to clear out the stuff from inside your nose, not to go into your sinuses. This goes up your nose, around each of your sinuses, and then clears it all out this way. You might even notice later when you're using this bottle here that you've done it, you feel great. And then maybe a few hours later, when you're lying on the sofa watching TV or turning your head in one way or the other, some water suddenly pours out your nose. That's actually quite a good sign because it's sitting at the bottom of a sinus here. And when you turn your head, it just pours out. So it means that it's actually getting into your sinuses. That's a good sign. Now, it is useful. Both of these things are very useful in terms of using salt water in your nose because it helps with the, the function and the health of your sinuses. It can also reduce the need for you needing steroid sprays and some of the other um, things inside your nose that you don't really may not want to do, like steroids and the uh, chromoglycate, all these other sprays that you can use up your nose. Some people don't want to use medication. They just want to use something more natural. And that does work. As I said before, uh, it's just salt water. You can, if you want, rather than use these sort of uh, sachets, they're not that expensive, but you'd rather avoid that. Buy one of these. I think it's about 10 pounds. Um, and you can just put salt inside there. I'd buy a few so you know how much salt to put in and you can just pour salt in. 
I know they say, oh, you should use only sterile water and you have to boil it first and let it cool down and stuff like that. But you're only putting salt water or water up your nose. We drink this water. I'm assuming you're from a country you can drink your tap water safely. I, I know they say distilled water. And if I was uh, being very strict, you should just use a distilled sort of sterile water. But I mean, we drink this water, it should be safe. And oh, this salt that you pour in from the you know, table salt and things like that is not completely sterile, all those sorts of things. But I want people to be able to use something like this, not be put off by the expense. So think about that as well. It's not, you don't have to 100% sterilize all the water you put into these things because we drink tap water. I'll move on from that topic. Now you can use these two sprays in this bottle as often as you like to clean out your nose. It's not going to really harm you. I would try and avoid swallowing this salt water because it's rather bad for you to drink hypertonic salt water because you can get quite dehydrated with it. It's a bit, you turn into that grape and that, uh, that bottle of salt water, you start shriveling up. You, you get very dehydrated basically. So don't drink salt water like drinking seawater. But really that's the only side effect of using these things. Try and use it as often as possible. Say if you've got a uh, sinusitis and you've got loads and loads of pain and say you were pregnant and you didn't want to use any of the antibiotics or steroids and things like that because you're worried about your baby, then use salt water. Don't swallow it, but flush out your nose as often as possible, maybe every hour until suddenly the pressure from your sinuses relaxes. All this stuff pours out. You feel so much better. I would keep cleaning it out may, maybe four times a day or whatever you feel is necessary to deal with your problem until the, the infection passes, you no longer feel so awful. You don't have to do it all the time, but some people do like using these sprays all the time because it just feels nice. Maybe something from our ancestors. Maybe we were designed, you know, we came from the sea, I guess, cleaning out your nose with salt water. Maybe we're designed to swim in the uh, sea each day, fishing and things like that. I don't know. We don't really know what the, the benefits are, but people do feel a lot better when they use salt water up their nose. It just feels, they feel better, although they don't particularly like cleaning up their nose at the time, but later they really seem to feel the benefits. It definitely improves your quality of life. And that's why a lot of people just stick with it, even though their sinus problem has got better. And if you're Cleaning out muck from inside your sinuses and you're prone to getting sinus infections, it might reduce the number of infections you get per year without you needing to think about a FAIRS operation, an operation which opens up your sinuses. Anyway, look, uh, I'm veering off to other things. Salt water is really good, is what I'm trying to say. Use salt water to clean out your nose. It makes it slightly more healthy, stops you from getting infections. You can reduce the amount of steroids. I hope you found that useful. Do take care. Bye-bye.